Ali. Ready? No. Uh, no, I have an option. So uh, you have little gifts that you can take with you forever. Our meetings uh, and uh, as a firm, please uh, complete this uh, take not take home in class surprise with us by the right. Uh, 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 wait, this isn't actually all that bad. No, nice. so uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Guy, you just pick it, you pick a lambda, and right? Plug in, it in in details, but. I will collect them by the. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, did you read the yeah. email? Yes. 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 Okay. I don't know the answer, but if you if you do have some ideas, uh, your train has the button in the right direction. Okay. Oh, is she? She too. Did not look directly at the sun. With this. Yeah. Well, okay. just in general. I mean, you might. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> also, don't touch the phone. So, uh, what do you see on the screen? The slash in constellation. The constellation. What is the most line connecting? Why don't I look directly on the other side of the screen? From the source. Leo. Where he is? Leo. I don't see Leo? Yeah. Leo? 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 Wrong. It's so no experimental. Oh, is so looking at the night sky right here? Yeah. Right, right. Let's say. So, like what, what about the, um, in, as a uh, year goes by, constellations, yeah. as, if, if you fill up certain time, constellations change their position, right? Yeah. Because of the, uh, there is an axis of, of, an, of an Earth. And uh, one, therefore, one acquires specific zodiac to uh, a certain birthday, right? So, um, can you point? Can you find? Um, is anyone? Oh, everyone is Leo, right? No, every uh, everyone. I'm a Virgo. Be crazy. Virgo. Virgo. Um, I'm an Aquarius. I'm right at the beginning. Okay. Is there any Taurus? In the class, or any Gemini? Okay, so uh, then you need to. Uh, um, what is between to the, to the bottom between Gemini and Taurus? Yeah, almost. All right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what, what did you hear about the Ryan uh, from like science fiction movies? Huh? What 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 what's, what's, what's about the dog? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's good. Yeah, in, in one of the uh, science fiction, they have like colonies, either either aliens coming to us or there's an evidence that makes like colonies on the middle one of the. Um, so here's the same uh, map, right? And by now, I think you became sufficiently astronomically educated by looking on this place, right? So uh, I would like to um, that you guys serve as navigators on a starship oh. and bring us to the Orion Belt. Yes. Okay. So we can we can try one one by one, seeing who will be uh, better navigator. Probably not be stars. Yes. I'm not going to read any maps. You wish of Right? Like the one constellation I can find in the What do you tell me? Is it? Okay. 
So now we are in the ocean on the International Space Station, right? Yes. And uh, let's let's each of you play and try to find uh, Orion for maybe. Oh my God. <laughs> It's no personal preference. He will just sitting for a little bit. Oh, just rotate uh, the Oh, Jesus, giving me horrible shit. Yeah, yeah, relax. I'm following this line because it's got my interests. Yeah. <laughs> Those are weirdness. Oh, I need to go this way. Stooping, zoom. Okay, you you found it. Yes. All right. There it is, right? Okay, let's give you another This is the second one. Okay. 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 Now pass it to the like Elsa. Yes, really, you found it. Also, you are appointed as a commander of the starship. Please bring us to. Bring us to your leader. Take me. Leader. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Is that the star? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Success. You <laughs> by This is so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That was the fun. Kind of last. That was. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. You're done. You're nature. Yeah. Are there any things? No. Oh, it's not like I'm broken. There it is. No. Oh, right up this way. That's not Leo. It's Leo. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh no. Oh, Jimmy Knight. Purple today. The two purple. How do you know? There it is. I have no idea. Okay, yeah, thank you. So uh if we look on the uh no no it doesn't be the same. So you see uh this uh hunter Orion uh, does have uh, uh several weapons. Like shield, uh, a bat, and uh, a sword on, on the belt. And uh, if one looks uh, in a very carefully with this much better telescope on the uh, middle of the tip of the belt, one would find an object that has much bigger size compared to stars, like stars on, the, on this different size. Basically, you don't identify their size, you don't know the intensity, but you'll find an object which is elongated. And uh, we do not see it in here, but it will be... It may even prompt and, and write the name of the object. Um, okay. But let's try to do it with other tools. <laughs> No. Okay. Dimitri, what's the name of the app? Uh, Stay, do like. Okay. 
the void because it is a, it is free. Yeah. Yeah. We don't uh, have I. That's what we're about. Okay. So uh, if we look on this uh, thing that uh, is called world of foreign, yeah, here are the few, few maps. You see here like M42 uh, uh, on uh, Messier, which is uh, like a French astronomer of the time before time of French revolutions. And if one focuses a telescope on this uh, object, one would see that it is uh, much more extended compared to the stars. Right. And what is the, what? How would you identify the color of this object? Pink and blue. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty. Okay. Yeah, That's a great color scale. So um, the what colors color depend on uh, like if one um, takes shots from atmosphere or from uh, star Hubble telescope, it's slightly different. But yes, you are correct. Right? Pink, blue, magenta. And here is an alternative name, uh, NGC 1976. So why it is extended and why it has this pink color? Because, oh, is it, does it have to do with the, uh, I want to say that it probably has to do with uh, the elements mm -hmm. that like release in like the energy. Like it'll make the cracks. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, what is the most abundant element in the? Okay. So, uh, oh my God, I don't want to talk about it. Does um, hydrogen needs to be always inside the stars, or it can be scattered in like extended spaces? Okay, and if it is. Uh, not in the ground state, if it is excited, what would it be? It would emit light. Of which color? Purple. Magenta. Okay. So basically we are done. You you know the uh, secret of the of the M, M of, of secrets of the universe. M uh, 42 nebula. Nebula which like, like stardust. Okay. So what else should we what else should we speak about today? The quiz. Oh yeah. Yeah, the micro quiz. Sure. Oh yeah. So here is a little uh how to say I wouldn't call it assignment, but a little fun task. So um if you take your um Grading, diffractional uh, grading, yes. and you try to, to look on this thing. Oh, look, he get closer. And, and try to look not directly, but as such. Yes, there's purple, blue, and magenta lights on the side. And it looks like this. It looks like this. Huh? If you look at it, I have to look at it with one eyeball, but I also can't see well. Hey, you can see it? You see it? Yeah, it's not even for in this way. Am I like, well, I now I can't see it. it. Yeah. You see it now? It's on the right side for me. Just turn your eyeballs to the left, to the right. Yeah. Do you see it? Yeah, yeah I see it. Yeah, it looks like that. I would see it is really red, more so than pink. Yeah, it is. I think that's actually red, but it's redder than that. Than yeah. the light. Like this, it looks like this. Okay, okay, and um, this is amazing, Dimitri. We are we are playing this uh, very inexpensive people, uh, your major advisors in major research labs. You know what, though, if it works, we have something. Oh, yeah, just hold it if you. Oh, then there's a oh, no, you gotta make sure it's like. Wow. Oh, right, right. At least here. This is what's interesting. If you look at the light, we saw that you can light the so, um, The ancient way to uh, decompose colors onto things were but right? And, and if you turn it around and try to look through, you should see the same pattern as with uh, diffraction of grain, but if you get yes, yeah, it for you. Yes. But if you the the lines will be offset much much less. 
So uh, diffraction uh, gradient is more efficient than uh, gradient. I don't think I'm doing it. So, uh, yeah, mine was really, mine was like here, but it's seven to the top. I could set it off to the transcript or one. You should try to, to look like, very, very like, far away, like put it no, almost on 90 degrees. But you'll see that it is a quite a, a torture uh, compared yeah. with uh, diffraction of gradient. And here's another piece of equipment. So those all uh, are very cheap, right? Yeah. And you do not have enough of those to be with the Try this equipment as well, pass around for a few things. So um, there, there is oh, like here where there is a, oh, I will yeah. put myself and then give it to you. Okay. So there is a little slip and the little uh, pupil, right? See here and there. And if you orient your pupil and the slit literally on this one and approaching here is, is, is the best practice. Oh. You will see there is a graduated lines and this lines will give you exact values in nanometers. What am I supposed to be looking at? Just play the. You know, this one is epic. Saying, I can see Sam. Oh man, and then I can see the whole rainbow, and I, I can see Elsa. I'm having so much fun, Dimitri. <laughs> this is so much better than my last class was. That class sucked today. This is better than any class. Right in. There's a girl with a really squeaky chair in that class today. She's like, what? Too much for this. She just kept squeaking her chair, and I was thing. going to have a breakdown. I was going to have a full on breakdown. Right so, if you do not see a spectacular figure there, just approach as you did with the fractional grain. Just approach very close. Okay. You don't need to take to... I can actually get it to work from over here. Oh, if you look at the window with this, you can see the whole rainbow. It's epic. Look at it. There's numbers. Yeah. All right, and now you're coming kind of closer to your surprise quiz. You need to record these numbers. Oh, what? <laughs> How many are there? Are those the landmarks? Yeah. Yeah, one. Point down entry. Yeah. 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 As I will keep modeling the rest of the lecture, you're welcome to approach and uh, try to close the distance. So, when looking through the slit, you are expected to see uh, something like this. So, you see, uh, slide was too late because uh, my pants were shaking. So, I used to be very sober and have iron pants. You have a sound in the But uh, there is a radiation, and uh, there are wavelengths of both this length. So uh, you need to record them and then process them. I think four lines now. I mean, two. Try to record them to the best precision you can. There's, there's two should be, 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 and if you do not trust the uh, what is inexpensive equipment, there is a, a little bit better. So, um, so if you look on, on um, this little thing that is uh, attached to to the computer, so it's mm -hmm. like an educational spectrophotometer, which gives a little bit better uh, so peaks. Originate at the wavelengths that correspond to emission. So it uh, reads the line, decomposes it on the same uh, spectral lines as you see in your little spectrophotometers, and then uh, analyzes it uh, in a digital form. So you can read something between 600 and 700, be more accurate. something between uh, near 460. So just record. At which wavelengths the peak appear. Okay. Actual modern science is being recent. It was at the time of Sir Isaac Newton. Now we have much better and lighter diffraction grains. 
By the way, if uh, um, you want to do the same by your own hand, you can take the CD, the face music, and you, you know, if you look on reflection, it decomposes rainbow. One can, one can do a spectrophotometer out of old CD or new CD. But uh, looking on the screen, you do not need uh, grading. It's already nice. Line up, line oh, up so I can see okay. where, where it is on the graph. Uh, should we use like our estimations just for looking at it? Do your best. Uh, yes. Yeah, do your the best. more digits, more confident you are, the better. All right. And uh, I'm not an instructor of methodology of experiment. I know that there are people, there are ways to process, do a thousand measurements, find standard deviations, but just do do the best you can. Okay. And Patricia, you, you may approach very close, maybe the, the signal will be better. Oh, so why well, it's like reading it in real time. Yes. That's cool. Okay. I'm returning back to the um uh, notes. So, in the uh, middle of the 19th century, he, it was a uh, everyone was building classical mechanics, classical physics, right? But some of the experiments cannot be explained by classical mechanics because if one would apply it to hydrogen, to so like electron revolving around uh, iron as a Earth about sun or moon about Earth. It will fail because in classical mechanics you can rotate this any uh, velocity, any angular momentum, and you eventually fall down. So uh, everything will be unstable because of all the practice. At the same time, there was a very interesting character in the middle of 19th century. So his uh, name on Wikipedia is there, uh, Balmer. I don't know what's the first, what's the second name. So he was neither chemist nor physicist. He was school high school teacher of geometry, and he was um, reading scriptures of ancient philosophers, like uh, and uh, ancient Greek philosophers. You know, there were philosophers who designed atoms just without any experiment, just looking on things and um, coming. To a conclusion that a matter cannot be divided infinitely, there should be indivisible units. And uh, they were assigning them geometrical forms like sharp angles, it means it will be bitter on a face, round, you'll be like liquid. Uh, and it was the way how the word atom was uh, designed by ancient Greeks. Another ancient Greeks were believing, like, uh, you know, uh, the Pythagorean theorem, right? So Pythagore was uh, designing much more ideas that we study in, in middle school. He was believing that anything in the world around us can be described with simple numbers, like natural numbers and their combinations, which looks a little crazy to us. But this geometry teacher, Balmer, was very excited about this idea and was um, any um, drunk party. He was telling, I can explain everything with numbers. And uh, friends were teasing, and one of his friends was a physicist, and he told him, "Come on, here is the hydrogen atom. That on experiment it gives line, on theory it just collapses. So what are your Pythagorean numbers?" And this junior teacher started just playing with numbers, trying to find any combination that may help to reproduce visible spectrum of excited hydrogen. So. Um, yeah, here is your piece. So um, the equations in the um, last and second last columns, the, the very last column is actually what Baumer designed just by playing with numbers. And later on, it was uh, protested by Rydberg, and later on, it was inspiring uh, Bohr of his model. Um, the middle column is the same equation solved for uh, M, for actual natural numbers. So there is a natural number corresponding to each line, and there is a wavelength. And uh, uh, your task is to record the values of wavelengths, convert them by natural numbers. If you get something non-natural, round up, because uh, 
Baumart and Pilterbor called as it should be natural numbers. And then uh, continue the sequence. You uh, find three or four lines, but you can predict the sequence and give like num uh, line number peaks, which uh, I'm just confident is not visible because it is in the UV region. And then plug these numbers back into last column and reproduce wavelengths based on your prediction. And then you can predict the line that you haven't saw, haven't seen uh, on this experiment. Okay, so. Now we start the actual lecture. Um, Dimitri, do we just pick a number for our fourth one? What do you mean pick? Like oh, so, like, no. I mean, you could pick you could pick like a next n, like a like n equals seven. But uh, it's it's your intellectual effort how we pick and how we design numbers. So um, we are starting the lecture right now. And as, as usual, we spend like half an hour to warm up and do it, the actual lecture in 20 minutes. So what do you see and what do you think about this uh, image? Do you have any good thoughts? Yeah, yeah. What, how do you interpret this uh, messy figure? Just, just tell by words what uh, what do you see. It will save me a lot of time because if I explain, I have no guarantee that you perceive it in the same way as I think. If you're speaking, I have a confirmation that you get it right. It 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 looks like angular momentum at different energy levels. Okay, so, but uh, if we analyze uh, two dimensional graphs, we just first declare the axis. So, what are the axes? Position, Position and energy. Okay. And uh, how many lines do you see? Oh, a lot. But approximately three. Three? Four. Four. Okay. Black, red, green, blue, right? So, what about the black line? Just describe what 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 it is. Oh, it's um, it goes as 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 we decrease the position, it goes to negative infinity, right? Yeah. And it is monotonous. It just if you go from uh, small to large numbers, it decreases, but uh, going up with uh, less and less deviation from zero. If you go backwards, it just go deeper and deeper into infinity. What about the red, green, blue? They're all just different um, factors of age. So it's a labels, but as we go to the higher values, larger values of position, they kind of coincide with uh, dashed uh, black, right? They approach zero. Um, do they deviate? Or do they deviate from it as, as we go to smaller x? Mm, yes. How? Uh, well, the red gets black, like more negative, or green and blue are more positive. But they, they have an inflection, uh, or how to say, minimal point. They change uh, value of derivative. They, they, they like decrease and then increase if you go from bigger to smaller or opposite. And they do not get to minus infinity, but they eventually go to plus infinity, right? They tend to uh, cross. The axis. Okay, so they look like potential energy surfaces. The potential energy is a function of the of, of energy distance. Same like in harmonica scenario, right? Yeah. Now, um, what about the equilibrium positions of these potentials? Are they equal? Are they different? What do you see? Equilibrium position for each of the potential energy surfaces. What? Well, that was our. We're only three lines. But continue progression. So, 
Um, the model comment about your assignment. Uh, I did miss to give instruction because it is a kind of implied thing, but uh, no, no, no. Um, when we here are natural scientists, we are not like bank money accountants, and we do not need to be organized. Oh. Scientists do not get much credit to be organized, but it is implied that we try, right? Yeah. So if you have some data, you want to organize it either in ascending or descending order. Yeah, that was and, a mistake of mine. And and even yeah. just to re re rewrite, starting yeah. from the redder for, for longer wavelengths and then going to shorter, shorter, shorter. So then uh, our last row is going to be the like the next quantum state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. Right. Okay, so uh, equilibrium position for uh, red, what, what is what it is? Is equilibrium at the inflection point? Is yes. Okay. Point? So, so it is different for each. each and what is the phase. value? One. Okay. What is the value? Oh, wait. There, there are oh, discrete yeah. values. Okay. What is the value for three? Nine. Okay. So, what does it mean at equilibrium value? It's where, where B is stable. Where, if there is a way to dissipate energy, it will stabilize at equilibrium value, yeah. right? Okay. So, I didn't uh, make connection to spectral lines and to hydrogen atom, but just by looking at the figure, you see there are three potential energy surfaces. They have different equilibrium values, and the depth of this uh, wells also is different. See, um, minus one half, minus one eighth, minus one eighteenth. So it also looks like Pythagorean some progression, right? So the next one. Probably, like if you remove one half, like one, one quarter, one over nine, next will be one over 16, so one over 32, right? Uh, so, and this will relate to the energies of eigenstates and hydrogen atom, according to Bohr. We, our course is too short to. Go over details in actual solution for hydrogen, but we can overview the more uh, um, solution. So, anything you like or dislike anything uh, in this video? Why should we waste another 15 minutes on working on it? I mean, I do know that this is in atomic units so, yes so how would it change i mean i guess never mind. I so we uh, we need to believe that um electronic hydrogen atom will take only discrete values and then by making differences subtracting energies of quantum states we should get the spectral line uh, but all right so here is the like summary and connection but uh, the Bohr model is very counterintuitive. It's not classical and it is not quantum, it is halfway. So one just declares that angular momentum is quantized, that we have this, you remember music where waves are going on circles. But from this waves on the circles, we derive conclusions for the energy, right? And this is something unusual and beautiful, and you do it in a few minutes. Ready? Or is born ready? Ready. I'm ready. Okay. Finally, starting. So, if something is rotating, there is a distance from the center, velocity and acceleration. The velocity is derivative of um, radius vector over time, right? And if the distance from the center doesn't change, but the vector changes direction, right? So this d phi yellow thing shows how <laughs> these two vectors are different. So dr is perpendicular to r. Do you believe me? Thank you. Do you? Or you don't care? You're saying it's true. Oh, oh, but yeah, I was so yeah. hating my high school physics teacher, telling me like, derivative is perpendicular to direction of two lanes. Distance? It's not. It's, a, it's, not? it's okay for you. So velocity uh, is perpendicular. 
Now, velocity is changing. You see this little green arrows, right? But this green arrows also change direction. So if you take derivative over velocity, right? It will be perpendicular to velocity, but parallel to the distance. You see it? So mutual orthogonal uh, angular frequency is like two pi or or period, right? And if we apply what our old body Euler was teaching us, previous years I was inviting someone to write, but it would be quicker. So uh, if circular motion of the elephant around nuclei is represented as in a complex uh, in a complex thing, right? So x goes like a sine, y goes like sine, and then it is exponential. If you take a derivative, then um, the cosine and sine change into sine and cosine, so we don't minus. Or if you do it in, in, a, in a complex uh, way, it will be just R naught, I omega, and then the same function, right? The real of exponential is exponential itself. And I means that we did rotation by uh, 90 degrees. Right, e to the power uh, i of oh, i is equal to this one. Yes, yes, going from horizontal to vertical, 90 degrees. Oppose if you want. <laughs> now, uh, if you do second derivative, right, then you get omega squared and i squared, right. So it is another 90 degrees. I times I will be minus one. So it is opposite direction. So the acceleration is what? Is minus distance times omega squared for continuous motion of a circle. Opposite view. Okay. So when we use your services star navigators and throw to Orion, our bones, oh, our bones can dissolve oh. and we become so weak that we cannot land on any plane. Okay. So if you do not do like substantial physical exercise every day in a space, bones dissolve uh, and uh, in the uh, about three, four weeks, uh, it will be like uh, life, life condition. Oh. So oh, one needs either, either to, to, to have a space gym, as people in the space station do. <laughs> one needs, you know, if uh, one more uh, moves on a circle, like you take sharp turn in your car, you have this centrifugal center pedal, yes? Is that, is the, the bones dissolving thing because of the lack of gravity? Right. Okay. Um, so one needs to replace gravity by a force constantly acting on, on our bodies by acceleration. And if we design our spaceship as a little uh, donut, Ooh. so space donut, wow. then we'll rotate and we will move inside this donut. That's then we are safe. Oh. That's how they make gravity, right? Um, it's, it's, not gravity. Gra it's like a uh, centrifugal uh, force replaces the gravity. Right. You, you yeah. use centrifuge in your experimental labs yeah. to separate samples. You're basically just spinning them so fast that they stay stuck to the, the ground. Exactly, exactly. And um, space agencies designed these ships for, for years, and one day it will be, uh, it will be fine. And there is no calculation <laughs> what should be like uh, parameters uh, of rotation and radius to give yes. citation. What is the sound? Yeah, so we delete the end of the Oh, and like that's based on. Oh, that's what we're gonna have to do for the world docs. Yeah, coming up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Prepare the next one. So they're like stuck against the wall. <laughs> 
there's an end there from the corner to the separate. That's so Yeah, the blood goes to the back of her body. So, uh, do you wish this movie? That's not compatible with life. I did see that. I don't know what movie that is. It's like, um, Odyssey and then Oh, Odyssey 2001. Yeah. Oh, Odyssey 2001. I have seen that. It's been a long time. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's good. It's all right. Watch it. Three and a half hours long. When you have like David Gates go when you have this sleep, right? So before it is released, the rope is retained on the rope because of the force that rope exists, right? And uh, the uh, rope itself exerts sentry. Like I always mix them, but centrifugal and centripetal. One that is rope oh. pulls it to us, another by inertia that it wants to go on a straight line instead of on a circle, right? One thing. Another. Uh, Sam taught us that angular momentum is cross product of distance times momentum, right? And if momentum is uh, Mass times velocity, we, we can use it later. Distance, mass, velocity is angular moment. Or velocity can, uh, it can be solved for, for velocity, right? Now, kinetic energy is mass velocity squared, right? Yep. So if you plug things in, then it can be expressed as function of angular momentum value, right? Angular momentum divided by Inertia, mass radius squared. So kinetic energy depends on both how quickly it rotates and the uh, distance from the center on the radius. Yes, like what you do with the microphone. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's what you've been trying to teach us. All along. Preparing, preparing you to rotational motion. So and it goes like crazy as function of radius. If radius is zero, it, it should be plus infinity forever. Now, uh, proton is positive, electron is negative. negative. What do they exert to each other? Attraction. Coulombic attraction, which is like one over distance is negative. It, it should be negative. If, if it is not a, uh, I should put it up. And if we are in atomic units, we just uh, leave away all constants. It's just the main reason we design atomic units. So there are two forces. One attraction by Coulomb, it's same, same like slim uh, rope pulling to the center. And then inertia is kinetic energy, right? Wants to go there. So here is a little introduction in atomic units. Uh, I need to jump through very quickly, but in your projects, the code is practicing atomic units everywhere. And if someone asks you, just look on the slide and prepare to be able to answer. So it is a uh, system of units where mass uh, and charge of electron is one, one constant is one, and uh, one over four pi the other constant in Coulomb is also one. And there, uh, if you look on Wikipedia, you'll see conversion factors to SI units or electron volts or whatever you want. Like. So your projects are done in the system because one can uh, skip factors. So <coughs> Hamiltonian's total energy, kinetic minus potential, right? Repulsive and attractive. It depends on angular momentum, kinetic energy is a bigger, bigger, is bigger, and the distance. So we are coming to the idea of this potential energy surface that we were looking at, right? For every value of angular momentum, we do have different Hamiltonian. We have different dependence of energy on the distance. And we have combination of this repulsive and attractive. So if you approach close to zero, it goes to plus infinity. If you go to very far, it goes to like negative, but, but close to zero. And there is a region where they are equal to each other. Okay. 
So how do we find where they are equal to each other? What do we do? Hmm? Were the um, forces acting in the opposite direction, were at which distance they compensate each other? How do you find the equilibrium point? So, yes, it is if they if they are equal. Then change of the distance would not would not change the phenomenon. It's like minimum. Yeah. The definition of minimum is part of the is equal zero. So if you take the derivative of this phenomenon, classical phenomenon, you take or uh, if you take the derivative of one over r squared and the derivative of one over r, what are those derivatives? Derivative decrees the power, right? X to the power n derivative will be n x minus one, yeah. right? So one over r, r to the power minus two will be minus two r minus three, right? One over r r squared. One over r derivative will be one over r squared with uh, yeah. this time. So you can you can you can check with on this, right? So if we perform it and make sure that this derivative equal to zero. And cancel our score wherever is possible, right? Where centrifugal and centripetal equilibrium operate. This will connect distance and angular momentum at which these two forces are equal to each other. Okay. And if we are in atomic units, if we set mass and one mass and all uh, equals one, then when distance is equal to angular momentum squared, then uh, it will be equilibrium points. So, depending on the angular momentum, we have we will have different equilibrium distance. So, here's the thing that I didn't like when I was reading about it. In, even if we fix angular momentum, any in distance between alpha and and uh, proton are allowed. But not at each distance if you they will if you break. If you um, if you follow the trajectory, it will be moving not in a circle, but it will be coming in and out, in and out, right? And we are looking for nice rounded circles. So a rounded circle, they should be okay. so allow distances in atomic units are one, four, nine, sixteen. Do you remember the image that we analyzed? Right. And the uh, so here the dashes black dashes are long, solid color lines are the um, kinetic energies the go to infinity, and the um, dashes color dashes are summation of black and color color lines. So one goes to zero here infinity there, another goes to plus infinity. If you add them together, you have a potential that has a meaning. And you see, they have minimum at one, four, nine, and the next will be 16. So if you do not get to the speed, okay? And if you plug in these values of distance and angular momentum into the Hamiltonian, right? So we plug in both, then we can cancel L squared and have from the kinetic energy positive one half from the uh, potential minus one to give the minus one half. And that one gets minus one uh, half of one uh, of uh, one over L squared. And then if you give this uh, one half, one eighth, uh, one ninth, by computing subtraction of this uh, values, one will get the spectral lines. The figure here is wrong because the radius escalates linearly. In fact, it goes quadratic. Um, it just will be not enough paper. The transition from two to one is UV dark. We will not see. The open bomber where the 
you know, pairs of order number two, then three, four, five, six. So it is what you should be getting in your uh, little assignment. And uh, when I was doing this micro quiz, uh, I've got like three numbers there, progressed uh, to continue this integration, three, four, five, six. And then the lines were like four tens, three ninety six. Um, meeting is done. Let me focus kind of on you and then you show this. It's on us. It's just not on a big screen. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. On you and I need to stop sharing. Stop sharing just a second, just a second. Okay, meeting is done. <laughs> <laughs>